Did you know that your favorite celebrity is actually transgender? Sources? Uh, trust me, bro. And your favorite celebrity also told me that that outfit you have on is not doing you any favors. Maybe you should go and get something from my store. Here's a totally real and completely unedited image of one of my favorite celebrities wearing something from the black shop. And if it's cool enough for them, I think it's cool enough for you. In fact, after I administered their hormone shot, they told me that all of the hottest transgenders are going to be wearing something from the black shop this year. Even the hashtag allies are going to be wearing this all 2024. So if you wanna be cool, you would do the same. <laughs> okay, maybe Trent Reznor isn't transgender, but wouldn't it be cool if he was? Well, that seems to be how an influencer named Lily Tino seems to feel about Kurt Cobain. And she ran to TikTok to share her thoughts about it. And as you can imagine, a lot of people, including me, have something to say about that. But I am getting ahead of myself. Hi, my name is Kat Black, and I like to think that I make media commentary videos for introspective hot people. And if you're here, I'll assume that's you. Now, Lily Tino is a transgender woman who has been documenting her transition in a very raw and open way on TikTok. After questioning her gender in 2014, by 2020, she was finally ready to be openly transgender and would start presenting herself as feminine in public an experience that she would describe as terrifying. Her TikTok is so interesting to me because she's a transgender woman showing herself at what I would say is a very raw stage of her transition. So many transgender girls on YouTube and other platforms only really show themselves after they've transitioned, after they've had several different types of surgeries. They don't really show themselves in the beginning phase to the finally I'm a beautiful swan phase. And it's been really interesting for me to see Lily Tino sort of very publicly go through her own sort of transgender growing pain. One of those growing pains being getting misgendered. Lily is probably the most well-known for her mukbang style live streams where she sits at a restaurant in public and eats food. And sometimes the waiters or the people helping her will misgender her. And several times she has responded to this live on camera. And in some of these altercations, she actually becomes pretty aggressive and hostile. In fact, my introduction to Lily Tino was a video where she was trying to get a waiter fired from their job because they misgendered her. It looks like uh, he's having a uh, nice piece. She, all she, she, her. Okay. Yeah, it's okay, it's all good. But it was not all good. Hi. I use she, her pronouns. I'm not sir. Oh. Yeah, like it, it, it's like a knife in the heart. I also, I did specifically ask ahead of time not to be called sir. Yeah, I'm just gonna go. Okay. The so sweet water starts at yes, okay. Sir? Not. I mean, I, not, I, I'm so sorry. I apologize. It's just always like a knife. It always hurts every single time. I was wondering if there's a manager I could talk to about something that happened. Yeah, I I was called sir. Oh, okay. It just really sucks every time it happens. I don't need to be called ma'am. I just need to not be called sir. You know. Thank you. Did you call me sir? Hey, I, I just want to tell you that. The person who gave me this called me sir. What? Called me sir. Oh. Uh, it's just like, it kind of just hurts a lot to get called sir. Oh, sorry about that. Okay. Very good. Right, thank, thank you so you, much. Sir. No. Oh, I'm, yeah. Thank you. I'm not a sir. <sighs> Nothing like a good misgendering. It does, it is a knife in the gut when I get called sir. I, f I feel like I need to tell him. <laughs> I need to tell him that that hurt. It hurts more though, and it's not intentional because it means like this, the, this is sir to him. I know you didn't mean it, but I'm not a sir. I'm so sorry. It's okay. I know you didn't mean it. It's just, you know, it hurts. I know when people clock me, it's, it's fine, but like, it does kind of hurt. Thank you. I'm not sir. Not sir. Not sir. But the guy who dropped the, the, the food off, he called me sir twice in a row. Yeah. Yeah. I'll let him know that and I'll see him.
Now, I of course have feelings about this, but I wanted to share with you some of the very commonly shared sentiments on TikTok at the time when this particular incident happened. I think it is very gross to expect people who you don't know to just know how to refer to you in public and try to get them in trouble for misgendering you in a non-malicious way. Granted, getting misgendered does not feel good. I've been misgendered before, but if you know that these people are unintentionally misgendering you, why still go get the manager? Why are you still trying to get these people in trouble? And it's shit like this. Y'all need to stop telling these girls that women can just look like anything and people just need to get the program and whatever. You don't just become a butterfly overnight. You have to go through a cocoon stage first. And it really isn't fair to the rest of your sisters because we all gotta live in this world too. Nobody wants to offend people or be constantly worried about offending people. And you're, it's causing a bigger division. And division equals less education. And I feel like this person should be investing all of this time, energy, money, obviously, with all of these fancy meals, not in trying to catch people misgendering her, but into working on herself. Because I'm telling you, she would be a lot happier. Most trans people I know in my personal life do not get this upset when people they don't know misgender them. And hear me out on this. An employer will see this video. I have a girl, probably has all the credentials. Oh my God, more than qualified for this job. Could do this job very well. She's probably trans and don't pass that well, but they seen this video and they're worried about, is this bitch gonna be coming in here berating everybody who doesn't perceive her as a woman off bat? Are we gonna always have this bitch up in HR because someone unintentionally misgendered her? It's stuff like this that y'all don't be thinking about where y'all be having these huge platforms and y'all use it for bullshit because I feel like this is that trans girl victimhood mentality. Oh my God, everybody's just discriminating against me. Oh my God, life is just so hard for me. I used to work with somebody who was under me in a call center environment and they were non-binary and they would have severe reactions when somebody would misgender them. And furthermore, this person was just not a very nice person. They seemed not to be able to have any patience for anything or anybody. They were rude, they were obnoxious, and I think that was a front because of how they felt in the world. Here's the issue that I think so many people are saying and so many people are correct about. It is absolutely nobody else's responsibility deal with your own mental health issues or your preferences when it comes to things that are emotionally damaging to you. And let me say that again in a different way. Just because you are triggered by certain things, whether it be social anxiety, whether it be being misgendered, whether it be anything that falls under the umbrella that you feel is you're sensitive to because of your own life experiences, because of your mental health, that sort of things. It is not the public's responsibility to have to cater to you because you feel a certain way. So I'm going to start by saying that I have some pretty complex feelings about this, and I don't really know if they're going to come out the right way. Firstly, I want to start by saying that even though I understand how hurtful it can be to get misgendered, to me, there is a very distinct difference between somebody knowing that you're trans and then deciding to misgender you in order to hurt your feelings and somebody who just looks at you and quickly assumes your gender and assumes incorrectly. Now, I understand why it's frustrating for Lily. When I was in her position early in my transition and I got misgendered, it was hurtful because for me, I felt like I was working so hard at being feminine and I was putting a lot of focus and energy and time towards that. And being misgendered felt like someone saying, you're not trying hard enough, you're not doing enough. And it felt hurtful in a way where it almost hurts more when you know they don't mean to do it on purpose. I think that that's probably maybe why it was hurtful to Lily. But I do think that for Lily, it is her responsibility to take the emotion she feels in that moment and not translate it into a false binary, a false dichotomy, where the only way that this person 
could have possibly misgendered you was because they were trying to hurt your feelings or be transphobic. If they were misgendering purposefully, I think that is more than a good reason to try to get somebody fired. But that is probably not the case. And frankly, I probably think it hurts her a little bit more that it probably wasn't intentional. And ironically, a lot of people would point out that Lily herself has a tendency of assuming people's gender based on their appearance. The guy who dropped the, the, the food off, he called me sir twice in a row. The guy who dropped my food off, he called me sir. That's all. To me, it makes a lot of sense for Lily Tino to be early in her trans life and also very, very sensitive around being misgendered. She's still in a place where going out dressed femininely is very, very daunting to her. And getting misgendered is like a reminder that she's not quite doing it well enough. A lot of times when Lily gets misgendered, she will point at the fact that she's wearing feminine clothing as a reason why she, of course, should not be misgendered. She's wearing pink. Obviously, she goes by she, her pronouns. I think most of us understand that a lot of people are going to assume gender based on appearance. And I think that when you're transgender, that becomes incredibly clear but it's still not a good practice. And ironically, Lily Tino would get into additional controversy when she assumed the gender of a celebrity who can no longer speak for himself. She didn't know that Kurt Cobain was probably trans. Here's why. First off, Kurt wore a lot of women's clothing. And when asked about this, they replied that they wore dresses all the time because they felt comfortable and free. Just look at Kurt in these pictures. They look so happy. And in an interview about their childhood, Kurt said that they mostly hung out around girls and that at one point they thought they might be gay. Many trans people who don't have the vocabulary yet to express their gender identity will describe what they're feeling as being gay. That's exactly what I did in middle school. Kurt is also quoted as saying that they identify more with the feminine than with the masculine. This is clear proof that Kurt did not identify with the gender they were assigned at birth. And the most convincing evidence that Kurt was trans was in an early version of Nirvana's All Apologies lyrics, where Kurt wrote, let me grow some that is clear-cut gender dysphoria. And of course, Kurt will never be able to tell us themselves, but the evidence makes it pretty obvious they were trans. That might be why Kurt's no longer with us. Maybe Kurt knew that we weren't ready. Now, as you can imagine, this video caused a ton of controversy on all corners of the internet from people who were really frustrated with the fact that Lily Tino was assuming Kurt Cobain's gender based purely on what he said and his occasional habit of wearing feminine clothing. And they had a lot to say about Lily Tino's blatant hypocrisy when it comes to assuming gender. You make countless videos about how it's not okay to assume one's gender, but now we're okay with assuming someone had gender dysphoria who's no longer here with us? Interesting. I was discharged under Don't Ask, Don't Tell in the 90s. I very much know the 90s movement. There was a lot of global movement. There was a lot of things that were happening where people were saying, hey, we've got all this stuff going in the atmosphere that's not good. We should probably stop doing that. Labor movements. There was a lot of people who were working too many hours for too little pay and they were putting a stop to it. Unions were booming. There was a lot of people coming out saying, hey, I'm gay too, because there was a lot of gay rights movements, not just gay rights, but LGBTQIA community as a whole were standing up and fighting. And with all of these movements happening, there was a new type of music that hit the scene. Grunge music. That's right. We have this new music and all of these movements and all of these things that are happening in the world. And what better format to use than this new music. We are going to come out and we are going to stick it to the man with the words in our songs. There was a lot of things in the lyrics that dealt with pain that people were going through, the hardships that people were going through, the suffrage, the you don't have money, you don't have the college education, you have 
unwanted pregnancies. You have things that are happening to women, which are not okay. And let's talk about the pay gap with women. And let's talk about how we treat the gay people. And let's talk about how we treat the farmers. And all of these bands were doing it. You had different ones like Pearl Jam, Alice in Chains, Stone Temple Pilots, and yes, Nirvana. With everything that I have just armed you with, all of the knowledge in your head to see what kind of a world that they were living in, what kind of music that they were trying to put out there, and the message that they were trying to convey. Do you think for a second that Kurt Cobain was putting on a dress because he wanted to change his gender? Or do you think he was doing it because he was saying, fuck society, we can do what we want to do? Because the entire message of the grunge movement was, fuck society, we can do what we want to do. And I'm not going to be sorry about this last part, but the creator who is stating, oh, let me tell you about this person's gender is the person who comes in and makes anger content, baiting people to misgender them so they can put it on their platform to get views. And now you're going to talk about Kurt Cobain in, in this way that you don't like people to talk about you. So the call is coming from inside the house. I think the conversation around whether or not Kurt Cobain is transgender is an interesting one for a few reasons. Sitting down to work on this video, the most simplistic thing I wanted to say is that I thought it was really inappropriate for Lily Tino to sit down and say that Kurt Cobain was verifiably a transgender woman. I just didn't really think that that was appropriate, especially because he's not alive to say that himself. At the same time, looking at Kurt Cobain's life, it's pretty easy to figure out why so many people would look at Kurt Cobain and perceive that there might have been a possibility that he was a transgender woman. But I think as we look at that evidence, we have to ask ourselves some other questions about some of the dichotomies that we buy into about gender. Kurt Cobain clearly felt very alienated by the sort of macho image that was often associated with rock stars. In fact, he had a really hard time identifying with the popular rock music at the time because of its misogyny. For so many years, I just couldn't understand why, although I listened to Aerosmith yeah. and Led Zeppelin, and I really did enjoy, and I still do enjoy, yeah some of the melodies that they've written yeah. and some of the songs, but they're definitely lacking something. And it took me so many years to realize that it was just, you know, a lot of it had to do with sexism and the way that they just wrote about their dicks and having sex, you know. <laughs> and that stuff bored me. A lot of his music is about the extreme sense of isolation he felt during his teenage years, especially around what it meant to be a man. He was sensitive in many people's opinion, and he even said that if he had not been married to Courtney Love, he may have been bisexual. Much of his support of women comes from how isolated he felt from classic images of masculinity. Fun fact, Kurt Cobain was kind of obsessed with male seahorses, and he was particularly tickled by the fact that they both carried and birthed children. In fact, he was so fascinated with them that he almost made seahorse imagery part of Nirvana's 1993 In Utero album art. Kurt Cobain was overtly political and he would even ask people who were sexist or misogynistic or racist to leave the show and forget about the band entirely. And it's kind of because of how overtly political he was and how much he didn't identify with common themes around masculinity that a lot of people sort of uphold him as a sort of feminist figure. And it's of course his alienation from classic ideas of masculinity that for a lot of transgender women is evidence that he might have been transgender. Lily mentions this in her video and a few other people I've seen that have talked about this also mention this, but a lot of people seem to look at normal pictures of Kurt Cobain in boy mode and sort of see this sort of dejection that they identify with that for them conjures a very similar image that they see when they look at before and after videos and pictures of transgender women. In Lily's video, she pulls up a picture of Kurt Cobain in a dress and says, look how happy he seems. Of course, that must mean that he is transgender. And again, this is a sort of 
assuming someone's gender based on appearance. And that's something that we're trying to get away from. To some people, gender is incredibly simplistic. Personally, I think that gender can be complex. And I think that even if you're a person who is in their own way challenging gender, it can still be complicated to unpack. Again, to me, it makes a lot of sense for people to take Kurt Cobain's alienation from images of masculinity and sort of translate that into the idea that maybe he might have been a transgender woman. But I really think it's worth challenging the way we validate those false images of masculinity by saying that those who do not live up to those images are somehow transgender. Now, I wanna make it very clear that I personally don't think that I have the ability to tell somebody that they are not transgender. That is not what I'm saying. And I don't know how some people are going to hear what I'm about to say, but it has been really interesting interacting with people who are designated male at birth, who identify as transgender predominantly because they don't live up to toxic masculinity. A lot of people don't understand that toxic masculinity as a concept was coined by a man named Shepard Bliss, who was part of the mythopoetic men's movement. And the idea was that they were trying to reform masculinity into something healthier. So the idea is not that masculinity on its own is a bad thing. It's just that it can be reformed, right? And I think that a lot of people conflate these toxic images of masculinity with what it means to be a man. And that is the general issue that is trying to be addressed with that discourse, that you don't need to be a misogynistic piece of shit to be a masculine man. That is the general concept of it, right? And I think it's kind of sad that there are some people who are adjusting to a point where they're saying that the only men who are men are the men who live up to those ideals. A lot of the reasons people are giving for Kurt Cobain being transgender really just has to do with him not being a toxic dude. Not every man who doesn't identify with toxic masculinity is a woman. And I really don't think buying into that idea sets a good foundation for men in this world, right? The idea that there is no way to be a man without being toxic. Don't love it. Don't love it. To me, Kurt Cobain is just an example of a man who was not toxic. A man who could paint his nails and do feminine things without feeling like it destroyed his masculinity completely. I think we need more dudes like that. I think we need more men like that. When I was looking into this, I was reading some posts from some transgender people and I read several that were something along the lines of, I can't imagine a cis man saying the things that Kurt Cobain said. And my question for people who, who say that is why? Why is it so hard for you to believe that a man could not hate women? Why is it so hard for you to believe that a man could enjoy feminine things, right? Why? Seriously, why? Shouldn't more men feel resentment towards the plight that women are put into? Shouldn't that be what we want? We shouldn't be essentializing this. And also personally, stuff like this is really confusing for me because I'm not a woman because I'm feminine, right? Like. I don't define myself as a woman because I'm feminine and because I like to wear makeup. That's really strange to me in my opinion. I am a woman because I simply am a woman. I'm a transgender woman and all the things that come on top of that, my gender expression, whatever, that's in addition to my womanhood, not because of. I think that there is a pretty massive difference between not identifying with the gender that you were assigned at birth and not identifying with the narrative assigned to the gender that you were assigned at birth. And I think that there are a lot of people who simply don't identify with the narrative. And if they were able to exist in their gender, absent of that narrative, I think they might be more comfortable. I think more people should question if their thinking is reinforcing a different 
but just as hurtful binary. People are very upset about the Kurt Cobain video. I know. Uh, I stand by the video. I made it because it is something that I was thinking about a lot. And uh, yeah. So a lot of the criticism is that, oh, Kurt Cobain was uh, is disrespectful, right? There is nothing disrespectful about it. Um, I think it would be pretty cool if Kurt Cobain was trans uh, because, you know, we assume that people are, is, are cis every single day. Uh, There's nothing bad about that. Uh, also, nothing about assuming, nothing bad about assuming people are trans. There's really, um, a lot of people are uh, attaching a, a value judgment to the idea of being trans when there isn't one. Um, the intent of the video was to recontextualize or maybe offer an alternate reading of someone who uh, is no longer with us and maybe why why they're no longer with us or a, th a part about them that might add extra interesting context um, to who they are or were. Uh, the fact that they are deceased is the only reason I made that video because um, it would not be respectful to speculate on a living person's gender uh, because then that, that can lead to like real life consequences of someone either getting outed or, you know, what have you. But Kurt Cobain's gone. They are no longer with us. Um, it's not hurting anyone to speculate at all. Um, so uh, if you think that it's disrespectful, I'd ask you to look inside and say, why is it disrespectful? It, would it be such a bad thing if Kurt were trans? Is it possible that Kurt Cobain was trans? Absolutely. But in all honesty, my question for people who feel this way is what would be the real purpose and use of saying that? Aside from it being kind of cool that Kurt Cobain might have shared an identity with you, what would be the real purpose of saying that? I think what gets me about this is that in death, transgender people are constantly having to deal with the opposite happening, right? Where someone lived their lives as a transgender woman and then their family disagreed with their gender and gave them a burial that made them comfortable where they degendered them. And to me, this is really not much better. Why do you need to define this person as a transgender woman? I understand that a lot of transgender women have the experience of living their life, presenting one way and not being able to identify a certain way. But I don't necessarily think that it's helpful to project that onto somebody who probably was not a transgender woman. There's just no use to it. It's kind of disrespectful to the memory that a lot of people have of him. It just, to me, doesn't really have a lot of use. Like, if I passed away and people tried to say that I identified with a gender that I very obviously did not identify with throughout my life, I would do more than just call the manager. I would haunt y'all for life. For life. Yeah, I do think that some of the response that Lily Tino got reeks of trans misogyny. I also think that she's wrong. And I also think that it's really not okay to come and say that someone was a different gender because of how you identify with their story. I think that Kurt Cobain challenged gender in his own way, but cis men should still be allowed to do that without being defined as transgender. Transgender people are not the only group of people who deal with extreme isolation and subsequent substance abuse and suicide. You know, these are all things that more than just transgender people experience. And while I know that there's a reason people identify so much with his story, I do think it's worth backing away from that and thinking, is this appropriate? And I really don't think it's ever appropriate to define somebody's gender after they've passed away. On that note, I think that's all I had to say about this particular topic. I am so curious to hear from my audience, do you think that Kurt Cobain is transgender? Do you think that it's okay to project transness on people post-death? 
Really, really curious to know what you guys have to say about that. Right now you are seeing some names on the screen. These are my $20 Patreon members. Several of these people have supported me for quite some time throughout my career and I really, really appreciate them. You can join my Patreon to get exclusive content where I talk about my process on YouTube and so much more. On that note, I will see you guys next time and I want you to always remember and to never forget that you are beautiful and you are loved. Bye.